full on attacking me and she just jo- like joined in. And I remember thinking, you stupid bitch. <laughs> That's kind of sticky, but I'll wait for some of that ice to melt. Just rub it on my pants. So then it was later that I realized, oh, I'm, I've always chewed it just to heat it up because I know that I don't want brain freeze. <laughs> I just wanted to like pet kitties all day. <laughs> Uh, I guess I kind of still do that, but... (laughs) I want something sexy. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. Hello, everyone! Welcome back to Kitty Liquor. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. I'm your host and your guest and everything else, Cat Wonders. <laughs> um, this is a solo podcast. Are you new here? <laughs> if you are, then that's what I'm telling you. Um, basically, I don't talk to anybody besides myself. And um, But I want to change that. I want to have some guests on my show. Now that I'm in my studio, um, my new studio, I should say, I have the space for guests. And there is somebody in particular that I might be working with, well, that I will be working with in the near future, that we will be doing kind of a podcast style interview, but it won't be in my studio. It'll be somewhere in Toronto. (laughs) I jazzed up my space a little bit, very temporarily, because I know I said that I would um, after the last podcast that I'd have something set up for this podcast. Um, But again, I've been focusing on the other part of my studio, this close to a tour, Um, hanging up all of my stuff, my clothes, uh, setting up my bathroom, still far to go in that department. Um, But (laughs) I just, you know, I put a picture up here, the plastic's still on it. Um, You know, I, I actually hung up my kitty picture and I realized my microphone was covering it so I've hid my microphone so hopefully the sound is okay and then I got some macrame going on here I got some fruit for if I get hungry that kind of stuff (laughs) um I'm just to be honest every time I come into the space I am so pleased and excited with how things have turned out I'm kind of getting more gutsy with my decor I've got a plan <laughs> um i got a plan to hang a bunch of acrylic prints so i discovered an artist called paul fuentes i believe it's paul let me just double check it's a very common name and i'm sure it's paul fuentes it's not like ricky fuentes or anything let's see paul fuentes and anyway i've discovered him on society six I now follow him on Instagram too. But basically, I ordered six of his prints from Society6. I got a pretty decent discount. And um, I could have ordered these prints in with the acrylic, um, like an acrylic mount, which I showed you in the last podcast. I was putting one together. But they're like $350 for a 13 by 18. I believe that was the size 13 by 18 350 dollars for those and i wanted six of them and i was like that's not gonna happen it's like 1500 dollars worth of prints but then i thought why don't i just try to make them myself so what i did is i went on etsy and i was looking for just like acrylic frames because that's pretty much all it is and then i found these kind of like dry erase boards, but they're clear acrylic. You could put them on your fridge or on the wall and you use like a white marker. It's just very clean looking. And anyway, so I found them in 14 by 18 sizes and they were like $30 <laughs> and they have the little gold mounts to mount them on the wall. Let me just get an example so I could show you. So this, this is what I'm talking about. So don't mind my fingerprints on here, but see these little mounts here? This is all it is. And then Society6 just pastes the art on the back of acrylic and just sells them like this. This itself was like $60 with a discount. So anyway, it sits on the wall 
like this. It's really, really super cute. It sits away from the wall. I have two of these, which I'm still planning on putting up somewhere. Someday. Over right there. Hi, you like it there? You can't even see it. <laughs> anyway, um, so I ordered six of those. And what I'm going to do, because the prints that I ordered have a white border, and I like the look of the artwork going straight to the edge. I don't want a white border around the artwork that I bought. So I'm going to cut it down, and then I'm going to... I, I was like, how do I stick it to the back of the acrylic? Because you can't, like, glue it, because it will look weird. It'll saturate the paper. And, um, and then I was doing some research, and people just use glue dots. They're kind of like a flat, double-sided tape, but it's, they're, like a, they're called a glue dot. And that's the plan so far. <laughs> when I show you the tour of my studio, I'm going to show you where I'm planning on putting them, whether they're going to go there or not. I don't know, but that's sort of what's playing out in my head. But these photos that I order are so beautiful and vintage and so Palm Springs and so kind of the vibe that I want in my studio space. Um, and I think you're just going to have to wait to see the ones that I ordered because it's going to be a surprise. And it's going to be great. I always say, you know what? It's going to be, going to be, going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be a thing in the U.S. too. <laughs> or there's Canadians that do that? I don't know. Okay, so today I'm going to be creating a very, very Canadian cocktail. The Caesar. I didn't have any celery because what would have topped this off would be a celery stick with like the fluffies on the top, <laughs> the leaves on the top. But I didn't have any because I've been doing so much cooking and I made this beautiful cabbage roll soup the other day and I used all the rest of my celeries. So you're so well. So the ingredients in a Clement or in a Caesar, um, compared to a Bloody Mary, so I think Bloody Mary uses tomato juice. We use Clamato juice. So it's interesting because I know like vegetarians don't have Caesars because there's clam in the clamato <laughs> i was like that's kind of weird to me but it makes sense i just didn't realize there was clam in clamato juice like there's seafood in there <laughs> so the ingredients are mott's clamato or any type of clamato you can get like fancier clamatos but this is basically just like a spiced up tomato juice lots of sodium so you don't want to drink too much of this there's vinegar sea salt salt spices onion powder garlic powder dried clam broth Natural flavor, onion, anchovies. Oh, anchovies too. Garlic, allure red, sunset yellow. All the things that aren't good for you. <laughs> I'll stop reading there. Um, but it's kind of a spiced up, it's like a jazzed up tomato sauce or tomato juice. Um, Clamato, and I always get extra spicy. This, I can't taste any spice in the extra spicy, but I'm going to fix that because today I'm going to introduce to you one of the best hot sauces ever. The Budweiser Habanero Hot Sauce. So for Christmas, from a friend, I received a seven pack of Budweiser hot sauces. <sighs> this stuff, you guys, I had to text her. I was like, that kit you got me is incredible. Typically, I'm not, I don't venture out with my hot sauces. I like Tabasco, Sriracha, more for flavor, but I don't, I don't like, I'm not adventurous with my hot sauces. I'm so glad that I got this because there's another one that was in the kit that's called chicken wing and it does not taste like a Frank's red or like a buffalo hot sauce at all. It's just the best flavor. And um, this is the spiciest one, the habanero. I think there is like, there is a sriracha in this kit, in the set. And um, anyway, such like if you see these, pick these up. If you like hot sauce, these are winners. Now my fingers are already sticky and I don't have any paper towel. Okay, um, now vodka is the is my choice of, of alcohol for these. You could put any alcohol in Caesars, but I think it's typically vodka. Um, I know some people do gin Caesars. I don't know about rum Caesars, but pff, why not? It's so flavored with everything else that you could really mask any type of alcohol in there and not probably not even taste it. I brought some extra garlic powder and then I brought some pickled garlic. This is broken up so many of my relationships <laughs> because I'm just a garlicky bitch. Okay. I like it 
in the morning and the afternoon and at night. And if you don't like the smell of garlic, we can't see each other anymore. <laughs> and then typically you want to be eating garlic with your lover and then it doesn't matter anymore because you just cancel each other out, right? <laughs> okay, so I also have some ice. So Caesars are served over ice. This is in my Yeti. So it's still very frozen, woo! Um, and Caesars, I've never shaken a Caesar, so I'm just gonna kind of build it. And we're gonna have fun. And we're gonna see it unfold before our very eyes. And then Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce, like, I was having an argument with somebody one time because they're like Wooster sauce. And I was like, it's worse, worse, war, Chestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. Maybe Wooster sauce is the clear win, but um, Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I don't know why I'm making it. Just, just sound right. Anyway, Worcestershire sauce. Sauce, sauce. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Um, yeah, annoying <laughs> as hell. Uh, and my glass straw. And I've got just a very simple glass so we can kind of see everything unfold. So first I'm gonna add our ice. And, uh, oh yeah, by the way, this is not going here, this piece of art. This is a series of three. I've got the other two over there. They're three together. I actually love them so much that I want to put them in my house. I have a perfect spot in my house for these. And I never had the guts to order them. But then Society Stick started making these gold frames and I was like, oh, this is what I'm looking for. So I may actually put these in my house and then order more <laughs> the three identical ones for in here. That's kind of cheesy, but there's enough like variety and options that this is just decor in my studio. I'm not using it to film with. But in my home, I'm going to look at it every day and so all my guests. So I'd rather them see it than just it being hidden on the back wall of my, you know what I'm saying? But it does go very, very well with the theme in my studio. Very Palm Springs, very desert, even though I'm in the Rocky Mountains. Um, yeah. I think that's good. I have more ice, but I'll save that for my next Caesar. <laughs> um, okay, so now I'm going to do about... I still need to bring my bar card in here. And I still want to put it somewhere where you can see it. I almost feel like... Because before in my old studio, it was behind me. But it just looked a little bit too cluttery. I kind of just want to show you the edge of it. And kind of... Like if I kept it here. And then just straightened out my table this way. I don't know. I don't know. So this is Stoli vodka. This is a Russian vodka, as far as I remember. Always second guessing myself. I am Stoli vodka since 1938. I've set the international standard for vodka. Proudly bottled and produced in Latvia, not Russia. So this is kind of a smaller, so let's do like More like one and a half ounces. Um, then, how do I want to structure this? Definitely think I'm just going to add the Clamato. This stuff, you guys, I could live on this. If you have a hangover, this is what you need. You could just drink this straight. It's that good. I have to leave room for hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. I find this to be a little bit sweet. Um, I love my Caesars very, very... <sighs> no! What am I going to do? <laughs> I don't even have anything that remotely could absorb anything besides that pillow <laughs> have you ever gotten so desperate that you just use whatever you got i don't want to be sticky <sighs> no okay i'm just gonna have to i do have toilet paper in the bathroom i don't want to get up again 
I'm just going to wipe it off. Rub it into my hands. That's okay. That's kind of sticky, but I'll wait for some of that ice to melt. Just rub it on my pants. Um, okay, then we want... I've never actually used juice from like pickled garlic before. I'll need pickle juice. This is... like a teaspoon, maybe a tablespoon. Let's throw some garlic powder in there. It's gonna be a bit grainy, I think. Maybe that wasn't the best idea. Um, and some habanero hot sauce. So like I said, I like mine spicy. So don't be offended. <laughs> I had a stroke, okay? Actually, that's not true. My doctor does think it was maybe a small aneurysm, but we don't really know. I don't wanna lose years off my life by getting a CAT scan. Now look at that beauty. That is like if you were to have a drink when you're really hungry. This is it. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the spice. I'm gonna be salivating this whole podcast. Um I'm gonna add a bit more vodka. Now I have more room. Okay, that's probably about two full shots in there. I'm going to take it easy, sip this, and we're going to get into our podcast. And I have something to show you. I brought this in a little cooler. It's actually crazy not having my studio in my house anymore. Because as of before, I could just like run to the bathroom. I don't have to pee in a bucket. <laughs> I could run to the fridge if I ever got something. Go get a cloth because I made another mess. That kind of thing. But now, if I forget something, I'm just making do. <laughs> It'll be easier in the summertime, but right now there's so much snow and I have to take my shoes off at the bottom of the stairs and put them back on. And ugh. Luckily, I got slip-ons. Anyway, <laughs> so where do I start? Let me show you this. Ready? ba da ba ba, -ba. Ba da ba, <laughs> ba da ba, ba da ba, ba da ba, ba da ma, ba ba ba, ba ba bum ba bum ba 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 ba. <laughs> the DNA company, my DNA kit arrived, and the second one arrived too. So they were shipped to me via DHL. Not a big deal, and especially like very very minor delay but um one arrived in my mailbox and one arrived to my front door and i know dhl sometimes will pass off their packages to other couriers so anyway i don't know what the hell happened all i know is i got two kits and they won't go to waste um i just finished filming myself opening the kit how to use the kit super super simple um it's very similar to say a 23 mirror, you know, ancestry, um, even though the purpose of this is completely different. Uh, super, super simple. And I'm about to mail that off when I'm done filming this. And I believe it's going to be about two to three weeks to get my results. And when I do, off I fly like a bird to Toronto. So this is the DNA way. This is the book that I ordered. This is how far I've gotten. <laughs> so still about a quarter. Um, but I ordered this book after watching this interview, uh, on one of my favorite podcasts, comedian podcasts, uh, Whitney Cummings, good for you podcast. And anyway, I just, it was the first time I'd heard anything like, like it. And I'm filming an entire video documenting my experience going and meeting with Kashif himself, 
who owns the company, is the author of this book. And he's going to analyze my DNA. And um, let me just, there was something that I read. Excuse me for snorting. Now, if I go here, basically, prevent disease, slow aging, optimize performance. Every cellular process in your body is instructed by the 22,000 genes that make up your genetic code. Our nutrition, lifestyle, and environment decisions impact our genetic function. Decode your genes so you can make the right choices. So basically, one size fits all is not something that works for humans. Generally, you go to the doctor, you have a specific ailment. The doctor says, this is what you need to do to fix it. Or if they can't figure it out, they say, just come back in two weeks. Try this pill. Try that. Anyway, you can kind of skip out on all that bullshit by this process and kind of optimize freaking flies. I swear to God, that's what was going on. If you didn't see the fly just landed on my head. <laughs> and if you're new here, that's new for you. But if you're a OG kitty looker watcher. That's happens all the time. Um, where was I? So yeah. So basically, the more you know about yourself, and the way that you tolerate certain things or are lacking certain things or can't um, function without, but you, you are, and that's maybe what's wrong with you, because you don't have the receptors to grab that vitamin D that you need. And it's kind of like, there's just some very simple, simple things that you can fix about yourself that would will make the world of difference to you, but you just need to figure out what those things are. So that's sort of what my journey is. I don't specifically have major ailments or things that I think I'm doing wrong, right? Because I try to live healthy. I mean, I indulge in some bevies once in a while, but that's it. <laughs> that's my vice, I guess. Um, and uh, I'm active, healthy, generally. And I mean, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. However, Sometimes you get so used to being a certain way. You don't even notice things like my brain fog. I'm like, eh, I'm just dumb. <laughs> I'm just not that smart. <laughs> but actually, what if you could change things about your minerals and vitamins and things that are optimized to your genetics so that you can, you realize, wow, I'm so much smarter than I thought I could be or that I thought I was. So anyway, it's just fascinating. And I'm going to make a full detailed video about it from start to finish. And like I said, I got nothing to hide. So we're going to have like a, we're going to talk about my jeans right in front of all of you <laughs> and um, kind of go through the process together. And that way you'll understand what it's all about and why I'm doing it and why it's such an incredible like advancement in just biotechnology and it's super cool. Ooh, I need more salt. This doesn't count because this is garlic powder and there's no salt in it. Maybe I need more garlic juice. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's actually good. I just am like a salt fiend. Well, you can see little bits of garlic floating around in there. You see that? Um... The weather, so it went from, so the weather was minus 38, and then now it's like plus two. So you could probably see in the background behind me a slight little vision of snow and then none on the trees. Well, that's what's going on. Um, I ordered a cross-country ski track setter. It's going to arrive, uh, should arrive this week. And I'm very excited, but then now I'm like worried that there will be no snow to track or to set. Uh, there will be snow, but it's not going to be optimal conditions. And then I think it's supposed to get hot or cold again and hopefully bring more snow. I don't know. It's just kind of one of those years where you're like, can't ski, then you can ski for a day and then you can't. And then things are closed because it's too cold. Or the avalanche risk is too high or like, like, I just want to wake up in the morning, have a coffee, go for a ski, get my exercise in, have the sunshine and then get back and 
that's just not been reality. <laughs> it has been some years, but the reality right now is, well, my original track set are exploded because it was too cold, hit a tree and just shattered into pieces. <laughs> it's like minus 35. And so that's not good. Uh, so I got about half my track set and then now I'm waiting for the other. I'm just concerned that actually the wings on the track setter are not wide enough. So if you don't cross country ski, you're essentially into, so classic cross country skiing is, which is what I do. There's skate skiing where it's a wide track and there's no little grooves for your skis, but I do classic skiing where your skis are in little grooves and it has scales on the bottom. So the skis have scales on the bottom so you can move forward. But when you go backwards, this little scales catch the snow so you can kind of climb and, but there are no brakes. <laughs> the only way you can stop or slow yourself down when you're skiing is to take one ski out of the track and to plow with that ski. If it's steep enough, you got to plow with both skis. So because I live on a property that's like this, woo, it's super fun, but going downhill gets a little sketch because I need to be able to slow myself down. So what I'm saying is two little tracks in the snow are great, but I need a wide berth on either side so that I can actually pizza my skis. And if you can't pizza your skis, you can't slow down. <laughs> so I'm like, I know it's going to be a decent width, um, but compared, I haven't compared the size to my old track setter, which was perfect. So we'll see. Hopefully I won't be wiping out. Um, some of my greatest injuries have been from cross-country skiing. <laughs> not downhill skiing, funnily enough. Uh, not biking. It's cross-country skiing. Um, part of the reason is because when I cross-country ski, I get such a good workout that I'm sweating. So I'm, sh I'm shedding layers of clothing as I go. And uh, then my hands are exposed. Sometimes my full arms are exposed. I'm in a t-shirt. Um, and like the toques off. So when I do wipe out, I get scraped to shit because my skin is exposed and you're wiping out on crusty snow. So it's not all fluffy and wonderful. If you've never been in snow before, <laughs> there are different stages of snow. There's the fluffy snow when it's really cold. There's the hard, scratchy, icy snow, which is most of the second half of our ski season. So anyway, and then there's bruising and then knee twists. You know, because you stay in your skis when you wipe out and one leg's going that way and one leg's going that way. Do you guys... So I've been like this my whole life and I didn't know it was different until somebody pointed it out. Pointed it out. But when I drink a Slurpee, if I drink a milkshake, um, I like chew it before I swallow it. Because it only makes sense to me that you heat it up a little bit before you swallow it. I remember I was drinking a milkshake and um, not even thinking about it, just, you know, sipping it, always vanilla for me, but then kind of chewing it up to try to melt it before I swallowed it. And then my friend was like, you, who am I joking? I didn't have friends when I was younger. <laughs> my classmate was like, why are you chewing your milkshake? And I was like, oh, like I couldn't answer it. I didn't, I didn't put two and two together that I was chewing it to heat it up before I swallowed it. And it's thick. So I was like, oh, it's thick. I have to chew it. And she's like, what the hell? And she'd be drinking. I'm sure she had freaking brain freezes up the yin yang. Cause like, how do you just drink that shit straight? So then it was later that I realized, oh, I'm, I've always chewed it just to heat it up because I know that I don't want brain freeze. <laughs> so when I drink a cold drink like this is my point. Ice cold, I usually kind of swish it around my mouth a little bit and might look like that I'm chewing it. I'm really not. Maybe I am chewing it. <laughs> but if that annoys you, sorry, it's going to keep happening because I can't lose any more brain cells than I already have. Okay. So uh, I was thinking the other night about, so, okay, this is kind of a crazy story. I sort of befriended a local police officer um, just by passing, biking the same trails. And um, nice guy from the UK, cute accent, 
cute guy, really, but he's married and all that good stuff. So we were kind of crossing paths and, and whenever we do, we just stop and chat and he'll be with friends or I'll be with friends or whatever. But this time it was just me and him. And uh, so we start talking and I get kind of curious about certain jobs, like especially his. And I've always wondered, like when I see cops or maybe emergency workers or, you know, EMTs and stuff like that, like what is the craziest shit you've ever seen? And I will just come out and ask those questions. It's fascinating. It's traumatizing. Like I'm not one that I can't, I can't even handle seeing certain things on TikTok or Instagram or TV. I just, it'll just affect me really bad for days where I can't get it out of my head. It like plays back. And the odd time, you know, you're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And then there's a random video. And before you even have a chance to flip through, you, you see somebody get hit by a car or some kid like running into the street or something. And it's like, then like the trauma is already like, it's already there. So then you can't unsee it. I've developed some techniques to try to like cleanse my mind after I see something terrible. And my technique is when I think about like when the thought comes back, I just imagine, (laughs) this is going to sound crazy. I just imagine like my pure kind self, I imagine like a cheesecloth and I I imagine my body going through the cheesecloth and the cheese or the cheesecloth going through my body and removing all of the negative things and thoughts and things. And I have this like ball of cheesecloth with like all these negative things that I saw. And I imagine like whipping it over the mountains, gone. I visualize that. And then I right away think about something else. And it does work. Like it does work. I mean, for only certain levels of trauma, I think you do that with, but just stuff that you see that sticks in your head. So back on track. Um, I was talking to this guy and I was like, you know, do you have any like really crazy stories? Not asking about trauma so much as like of all the years he's been a cop, he's probably in his fifties. Like, and he used to be a cop in the UK and then in the States. And then so here, so he's seen stuff. So it's like, what have you, like, what would you say is like the craziest thing you've ever seen? And he says to me, well, there is this one story and this is how I knew I was a sociopath. (laughs) And he was serious. I was like, oh, okay, this is like interesting. First of all, like that you admit this about yourself and you're a police officer. And I mean, he might have, he's a bit awkward. So like he might have been joking, but I didn't react like, oh, ha, 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 you're not a sociopath. It was like, oh, okay, let's hear it. So he said that back in the UK, um, him and his partner were called to an accident scene. And it was a rainy night, I guess, really windy roads. And it was a part in the road that often there were car accidents. So him and his partner, they go to see what's going on. Anyway, it's it's a car accident and three fatalities. All three people in the car have perished. And his partner... For whatever reason, they didn't have communication with headquarters. It was sort of in like a no service zone or something like that. So his partner had to go drive up the road a kilometer or two to get service, to be able to get back to dispatch, to send somebody else or let them know what was going on. So this cop, my friend or acquaintance, (laughs) um, he wound up being stuck there and he said and it started to pour rain it was already raining a bit started to pour rain and uh he had his lunch with him and i guess in his pocket or something he had to get out of the rain so he told me that the car was upright on the road all three people were dead so he got into the back seat of the car (laughs) sat in the car and ate his lunch with the three dead people in there. So that was crazy. 
And I thought, what kind of dissociative disorder do you have to have <laughs> to be able to sit in a car or get into a vehicle with these poor souls? But then to eat your sandwich with these three people around you, that is twisted. And that is concerning <laughs> because <laughs> this is a cop, right? Uh, and you know what? Maybe it takes a certain type of person to do that job. I get it, right? Like I could never be a cop. I could never go and, you know, I just wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I would be a wreck. I just emotionally, I'm sensitive that way. And I just don't think that there's any level of training or whatever that would, could prepare me for that kind of thing ever. But sometimes these people call them sociopaths, call them psychopaths, whatever, do get into these fields. How do you know if you're the right person to become a police officer or an EMT, uh, which is an ambulance driver, or these like traumatic fields of work, even firefighters, right? they're fighting fires, but they're always involved with like, they're always following the ambulances to the accident scenes. And so like, they're also very involved with that kind of thing. Um, I just wonder, I'm like, it's crazy to think that like not everybody is built for every job, right? Little Timmy wants to grow up to be a firefighter or wants to grow up to be, it's like, it's like a veterinarian, you know, I want to help animals, mommy. You know, like when I was a kid, I was like, I'm going to be a vet. I just wanted to like pet kitties all day. <laughs> uh, I guess I kind of still do that. But, <laughs> um, you know, I just wanted to help animals and love on them. And I never grew up with any animals besides a bird named Chirpy. Does something just fly past my screen or is that just my vision? Anyway, um, so, you know, that but the reality is not that. You know, um, the reality of a vet is like traumatic and putting animals down half the time. There's some rewards and there are rewards with all of these jobs, right? Like a surgeon or it's like, wow, you really helped somebody. But I feel like that's like 10 or 15% and the rest of the time. I mean, still putting an animal down is you're still helping somebody. You're still there and helping them through what they need to go through and their pet and whatever. But a lot of times, like imagine making a mistake, I mean, not in, like, just even as a vet, the family dog comes in, you know, you think that this is wrong with it. You give surgery. That's not what's wrong with it. The surgery is too much for the poor thing and it dies and you fucked up. <laughs> you screwed up. You could have done this, but you did that. I mean, imagine that. That's what I would be probably one of the biggest concerns for me would be my just, my second guessing myself and screwing up <laughs> like the, that kind of like heavy responsibility is crazy and then I got to thinking you know certain people who do certain jobs that shouldn't do those jobs that only got into it because say their boyfriend was going into the same program or their parents were doctors and that's why they you know you're forced to go into a field that maybe you're like me I couldn't be a surgeon. I'm smart enough to learn to be to do brain surgery, <laughs> rocket surgery, but emotionally, I'm not the right guy or gal. I just am not that. Um, one example is so I have a friend who's a doctor, a GP, general practitioner, and she, um, super great girl like so smart and like beautiful and oh my god just like the epitome of like success she has four kids she's just like fuck and she was we were having a conversation we we're out for dinner she was telling me about how she doesn't that's not what she feels like she should do she doesn't like she's a doctor she's successful she's practicing she's like making all the money and doing all the things but she that's not what she wants to do and um her boyfriend at the time went into the field and she just followed him and they both became doctors. And it was, that's just how it happened. Um, 
She's a great doctor to me, but I'm like, really weird. It's kind of like, oh shit, imagine putting all that effort and time and not and doing something that you don't really like, especially because like you're doing pap smears, <laughs> you're doing all kinds of gross things, cutting off moles and diagnosing rashes and God, I just can imagine the shit. So yeah, I can see why you wouldn't necessarily like to walk around with a stethoscope around your neck and in scrubs, it's like glorious. It's like, I'm a doctor. And when I see doctors, I'm like, wow, <laughs> the least seven years of schooling and the discipline and just the knowledge. And it's like, I've always been envious of like these people. And don't get me wrong. There are lots of doctors that are meant to be doctors, great doctors, but there are lots of doctors that aren't. And that kind of ties in a little bit about this DNA company and, and my opinions on the pharmaceutical industry and like the medical industry. Um, I'll tap more on that, like when the time comes, but, um, it all kind of ties in one thing. Another thing that I thought of <clears throat> is teachers. So I have a couple of friends that are teachers and I know that they only became teachers because they wanted summers off. Think about it. And um, one of them is no longer teaching because that's just not what they're doing with their life. <laughs> they realize, oops, um, excuse me. And then the other one is still teaching, but you know, like he's, <laughs> he's just doing his thing. Um, but anyway, so imagine not really having passion for teaching or wanting to necessarily be a teacher. You just want to work for 10 months out of the year and have two off in Canada. That's how it works anyway. However, the two months off is not two months off. It's like you're pre preparing for your next season of teaching or your next year, right? You have to prep all of your classes and oh my God, the work. But what happens when you get a teacher in a school that doesn't really care about teaching um, and your kids are going to school and this person is like, I'll tell you what, I hated school. I hated school so much. I just, when three o'clock would roll around, I just would literally start singing out loud. And I remember reconnecting with some classmates that I had in kindergarten because I moved away to Calgary from Lethbridge when I was seven or eight. And then moved back when I was 15. And so when I went to high school, a lot of the people that I went to kindergarten with were in my high school. And I disconnected with them when I moved away. Of course, I wasn't in touch. There was no like social media and stuff like that. So when I got back, they had all these stories because I looked different. I was kind of a nerdy kid. I had a big gap between my front teeth, greasy long hair, hand-me-down clothes, really whimsical and kind of just in the la la land and i remember like just my thoughts and things i did and how i would try to make an impact on somebody by like making something up or twirling on the class on the playground and spinning until i just would run into things really just stupid things like natural kid stuff but i was a little over the top and uh but they would tell me stories about i would be on the bus and i'd sit by myself I had no friends. I wonder why. <laughs> um, and I would just start singing out loud. But <laughs> it just was so funny because this girl, Naomi, that I went to kindergarten with, she was telling me, she was like, yeah, you were really weird. And it was still kind of like rude the way she was telling me. So she was not like trying to help me or anything. She was like, yeah, you were really weird. I remember. And I was like, really? I'm like, I kind of knew I was weird, but like, I just kind of was looking for some examples. And she's like, yeah, you'd be on the bus and you'd be like, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, rocka, chicka, boom. And you would do that the whole ride. And it was like, I remember doing that. <laughs> boom, chicka, boom, chicka, rocka, chicka, boom, chicka, boom. It was like a beat in my head. It was like rhythm. I don't know. My parents were in a band for 10 years. I just, it was like coming out of me. I didn't even like, think it was weird because I probably did a lot at home but my mom was just like eh, she's musical <laughs> she's a little bit whimsical musical uh 
So I think we all did kind of funny things like that as kids, but I was, my self-awareness was zero. I did not know that I was being such a loser. (laughs) Thinking back, I mean, I wouldn't change anything. And I think when you kind of fall into your place in life and you are happy and healthy and kind and whatever, it's like being a weirdo taught me a lot about humans and their tendencies and kind of like, yeah, like it gave me this education, you know, when you are a bit different, it's almost like, you know, they say you give your kid a weird name, it like builds character or whatever. That's very true in a lot of ways because you can weed out very early who are your friends and who aren't and who to watch out for. And what I'm sinking this back into is teachers. So I remember specifically my grade four teacher. What was her name? Anyway, Quebecois, French Canadian. Kind of a butchy redhead. (laughs) Frenchy. And um, I remember specifically the kids in the classroom bullying me for putting my stickers on my binder or something. It was like my, whatever, the little duotangs. And something about like how I was doing that, but I should have been doing my work. Typical. Me always off in La La Land. <laughs> and, um, and the classmates knew that I was supposed to be doing my work and not putting stickers on my duotang. So they chimed in and started to be like, Madame, blah, 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 uh, Katrina. And we couldn't, we couldn't speak English. We had to speak French. It was French immersion. And if we were caught speaking English, then we would lose like a point or something, or we would get something taken away or whatever. Madame, blah, 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 um, uh, Katrina, ne peut former, but I don't even remember how to say it in French, but she's not doing her work. And, um, and then the teacher's like, oh, what is she doing? She's like there, like, I don't know, reading her freaking magazine or whatever she was doing. She's putting stickers on her duotang. And then, uh, the students were kind of like, oh, look at that. Like she's putting stickers on her duotang. Oh, look at how bad that, like, then it was like, Then it was like kind of the ball was rolling and I was kind of like, oh God. And the teacher comes over. Who puts, and she was like doing just what the mean girls were doing. They were like full on attacking me and she just like joined in. And I remember thinking, you stupid bitch. (laughs) And I was in grade four, so I would have been like nine, 10. And I was like, never again, like, I just, and who do I tell? Am I going to go to the principal to tell on my teacher? No, that's not how things worked back then. You just took it in the back like a knife and then just kept on rolling. But it just was like the first time really that, I mean, teachers pissed me off in the past, but I always kind of was like dicking around or like whatever. But the fact that this teacher joined in the group, and to be honest, that was probably like 50% what the scenario really was. I kind of threw in things I don't quite remember but it was bad. And, um, yeah. So, but I'm thankful for that because I realized like, no, like grownups aren't all like good people. Like you got to be careful with like, because my family always growing up, loving, caring, lovely people. I didn't know. Like my mom also was a babe. Like my mom, she still is, (laughs) but she, for her age, and I just, like I didn't realize how beautiful my mother was at the time until I went to my friend's house and, I, and my friend Natasha, and I met her mom. <laughs> and her mom was just an ogre. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's so rude. But I mean, I just didn't know. And it doesn't mean they're bad people. I just thought everybody's mom was like that. Everybody's mom looked like a Victoria's Secret model. (laughs) No. And not that that really has much meaning, but like, 
I just, I was just surrounded by people and family and like even my mom's friends and my dad's friends and everybody was just nice and kind always. And then it was like, you go to school and these, these teachers, people that are supposed to be looking after you, helping you or teaching you, encouraging you, like inspiring you are like really not nice people. (laughs) So my point is not everybody is meant to do certain jobs. And it's quite sad when there is a doctor that doesn't give a shit about you and is more interested in lining their pockets than actually helping you. Um, It's very, it's tough, Um, especially when it comes to health. Um, Right now, a family member is taking a very, very, very difficult course um, to become a osteopath. And he's already a massage therapist, but he's going into osteopathy. Now, the course he's taking apparently is just sort of all over the place. Things are changing constantly. And I just couldn't imagine putting the amount of effort into going to school and paying all this money, putting in all this like crazy time and effort when it's so disorganized. I'm like, God, I mean, that's not necessarily exactly what I'm talking about, but I just had to throw that in there. Like that's, that makes things 10 times harder. But I guess that kind of like, it pairs with what I was saying about bad teachers. And like, I did terribly in school, um, at least all the way up to like grade seven or eight or nine. Partly because I did have some great teachers, though. They weren't all terrible. I was also in French immersion. I didn't understand shit. (laughs) I couldn't write it, couldn't read it. And so when you go through like up until about grade six, I didn't really get proper kind of foundation base to go into grade seven, eight, and nine, which was junior high in Alberta. Um, And uh, yeah, it's just kind of, I don't know, thinking back and just... All the different things and experiences I had, I wouldn't change, Um, you know, in the same way that I taught myself how to play piano, I taught myself how to play guitar. If I would have had lessons, I would have not pursued those things. Because when I started to learn to play piano, the first thing I did was try to learn a song that I loved. And I figured it out. took me a while, but I figured it out. But my theory was all off. I didn't ha- know where to put my fingers, whatever, but I could make the sound that I n- knew was right. Like I knew that was the music that I wanted to play. Like it just came out. And, but if I were, if my mom were to be like, hey, I'm going to put you in piano lessons. I would have been like, yeah, but we couldn't afford it. So I never went into piano lessons, but I'm so thankful because they would have been like, no, 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 no. This is where we start. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. And then I would have been like, I hate piano. <laughs> it would have ruined it for me. So um, proper guidance is the key to everything. Is what I'm going to sum this up as. <laughs> That's the point of what I'm saying. Is that sometimes you have to find it yourself when you aren't properly guided. I was definitely in most areas of my life. Um, Grade one through six, questionable. Was I guided properly? No. Uh, Not really, but I am who I am and I'm creative. And I find the the combination of these two things, resourceful and creative. Those two things I definitely am. And I can figure shit out. If I'm, if I have an idea... I can make it happen. And I'm really good at that because I can find the resources I need to figure out how to do it. Those two things are very important in life. And um, I mean, I'm lacking a lot of other things, I'll admit. But those two things I know for sure I am. There was something else I was going to say. Is that distracting? My good luck cat. I brought him back from Spain. Right from Barcelona. Barcelona, by the way, is one of the trendiest cities I've ever been in. And I didn't know what I was expecting. I kind of, I've been to Mexico my whole life. Like, I shouldn't say my whole life, but first time ever when I was 12. But I've probably been there six or seven times. And I don't know, because maybe it's the Spanish-speaking countries that I kind of associated Spain with Mexico. 
But Spain is so not Mexico. It's so different. It's so like, and nothing's wrong with Mexico at all. But there's, it's like, the it's a history combined with modernity. Is that a word? <laughs> modernity. <laughs> it's just modern, old world modern, where really funky stores, really modern funky stores built into these old like 500 year old buildings but they incorporate the rock in with the decor and it's just like whoa like really cool stuff of course the food oh my god i still need to lose like 15 pounds from that trip <laughs> just stick it on i swear to god i was telling i was telling a friend of mine the other day i was like i know i'm getting older but these last few pounds i cannot get rid of them diet exercise cutting out things do, do you think anyway I just need to do more cardio or something. Actually, I need to get on my ski trails. <laughs> That'll do it. So I'll update you when my track sitter comes. I might even send you a little, show you a little clip of this track being set. And um, then you can get a better grasp of what I'm talking about. Let me know in the comments down below if you agreed with some of the things I talked about, if you have something to add to that. Um, if you have any questions about the DNA company or this journey, um, I'm still at the very beginning stages and I just filmed like the first part of it and, uh, I'm excited to share it with you because this is just, it's such a revolution in health and just knowledge about yourself that I can't express. I, I'm not going to be the best at explaining it because I just, I always share too many details and people like lose grasp of what I'm trying to say, <laughs> but I'm going to do my very best. And um, this book, even though I'm a quarter of the way through, actually, I'm a bit more than that. Oh, my God, I'm a third. <gasps> Do you ever get proud? Of I don't read books. So I get proud of myself when I just see progress. I'm like, wow, I read all that. It takes me back to grade six. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Thank you. So oh, did I mention this is episode 121? I didn't. This is episode 121. Can you believe it? I believe so. I think it is. There was me second guessing myself again. Um, and this was fun. And the Caesar's great. I have to go figure out what I'm going to make for dinner. And you know what helps me figure out what to make for dinner? Caesar's. <laughs> it kind of makes me want to make like a spicy soup. But I did that the other day, so... All right, everyone. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Make sure if you're listening to this podcast, you watch the video version on YouTube um, and vice versa. You can just download the audio versions on every platform. And this studio is slowly taking shape. It's it's coming along. And um, so we'll probably look different next time. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.